we have a great segment up for you next. Samuel Johnson from sharpeningreport.com is going to be joining us. We met Samuel in Chicago. Great guy. And he did some work with Skywatch TV uh, with Tom Horn. And uh, he's doing the sharpening, re sharpening Report now. And I was on his show Saturday and we did a, a great interview. We have with us Samuel Johnson from sharpeningreport.com. Samuel, welcome to the Hagman Report. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, and I just want to say that was a great introduction, uh, I intro to the show. Uh, I, I want to say I want to stand with you guys, send my prayers and my support for you. And Doug, if you're handing out NRA memberships, count me in. I'll, hmm. I'll take one. Yeah. You, uh, you know what? Uh, I'll tell you, I'll tell you something. I will, in fact, uh, gift you an NRA membership. <laughs> uh, just send John the necessary information. I'll make sure you get one. Um, uh, well, not pretty well stretch but that's okay we're gonna we're gonna do that because we, we need to take a stand and and we need to put our money our time um where our mouths are and this is a whole new ball game now but we've been fighting this now for roughly three actually longer than that five years behind the scenes this is this is not a game folks mm -hmm. and you every each and every one of you listening or watching you're in this whether you know it or not so and Sam, we, we thank you uh, for the support. Why don't you do this? Since this is your first time on the show, why don't you tell our audience a little bit about yourself? Yeah, well, uh, I was born and raised in the UP of Michigan um, and basically started, uh, found the Lord when I was in high school. Um, you know, thanks to my sister and my dad playing a big role in that. And then um, uh, basically I went down to a conference uh, down in Texas a, last year. Uh, and I met, um, I met Josh Peck there and he had known who I was because my, uh, my sister had set up a meeting with him. Um, and my dad and, and her went down there just to, to talk about some things that they had on, on their mind. Uh, and so they knew who my dad and my sister were. Uh, and so when I went down to the conference, I was able to meet him, uh, and I ended up getting him, uh, getting lunch with him. And I just kind of shared some things that were on my heart, some ministries, things that I was trying to, uh, create and, uh, you know, that was kind of that was kind of that there. Uh, and I kind of went our separate ways and he said some really encouraging things, gave me some good advice. And then uh, that was it. And then a couple months later, uh, he sent me a message and he's like, hey, I uh, got a little bit of a project that I need some help with. Um, and, you know, Josh Peck, he's a great guy. And he, he it was just helping him with his newsletter. I was like, yeah, sure. I'll be happy to help you with that. Uh, and he's like, yeah, well, it's just uh, into the multiverse stuff right now because uh, I'm looking for a host for the Sharpen Report. And I was like, yeah, sure. I'll help you with that. And if you need a fill in host. Uh, I'll be happy to come in and help you. Uh, and he's like, well, it's funny you say that because the Lord's kind of been putting on my heart that maybe you should step up. So one thing led to another. And now I'm about or 40 or so episodes into the Sharpening Report. And it's been it's been a blast, you know, being able to talk to the, all the people I look up to. Uh, Joe and I had a great uh, interview on Saturday that's going to be posted on Friday. Um, so it's, you know, it's a it's a dream come true. I get to talk to really smart people and sit there and listen and ask questions. <laughs> you, <laughs> how, you, how much more could you, he ask for? You are you are really at the tip of the spear of a number of issues and uh, very intelligent, very intelligent. I would urge everyone to listen, especially uh, to the program uh, that that's going to be posted. For, you said Saturday Friday. Right? or Friday. Friday. Uh, okay. But one of the interesting things about this interview, and Sam, I don't know how much you want to get into this, but after we were done with the interview, Sam said, uh, "Have you ever had any?" Is it all right if we talk about this, Sam, the, the second yeah, oh, part yeah. of that? He uh, he said, have you ever had any you know, supernatural experiences or, or encounters? And he's recording a guest that he has coming on the Sharpening Report. After that interview's over, he's recording uh, anywhere from, what, two to ten minute segments from people and any kind of uh, strange experiences they've had. And I, I talked yeah. about a, a sighting of like a UFO type thing I had. But I, I think when that comes out, that's going to be really interesting. I cannot wait to hear that. Uh, and I bet you've heard yeah. some really fascinating stories from some of your yeah, guests. Yeah, for sure. It, it's uh, it's just one of those segments to try to show people the reality of the spiritual realm because it's so easily lost in our culture today. Uh, that you know, it's all about the physical events and what happens. Uh, but there's so much the spiritual warfare is constantly going on. So being able to ask uh, people on the front lines of these battles some of the spiritual encounters they've had is really it's it's really interesting to see how God has worked in each and every person's life, and it really shows how big God is. Uh, yeah, most of the most of the the stories are between two and seven minutes long, uh, except for Dan Duvall. He had like a fifteen minute long one because you, you know him. He's kind of he's he's like really into the front line. So, uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's a really interesting part of the Sharpen Report.
If I can just mention this, I, th- I think it's so important, and this is going to be driven home later in the show. Uh, I, b- I believe that what we're seeing here with respect to all of the headlines, uh, you can you can pick any headline, and but you pointed this out. Look, this is a battle in the spiritual, and, and uh, uh, websites, in my view, uh, uh, garbage sites like Salon or uh, you know Rolling Stone or those, they they are so anti God, they're so anti Christian. But but uh, this is really, in my view, this is really a battle. All of this, everything we're seeing, is really in the spiritual manifesting in in the in the in the real world. Do you agree? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and you can see um, that divide getting bigger and bigger between uh, the spiritual uh, of good versus evil. Um, you see it in every single debate that we have, whether it's about gun control. Uh, abortion, any sort of politics that we get into. It's just that that cultural divide is getting so much bigger. Uh, and, and sometimes it feels like our culture is at a stalemate because the forces are just ramming heads constantly. Uh, but yeah, as you can see with things like the censorship, you know, starting to rise up, our culture is slowly moving more and more towards this uh, evil based society, which is just so it's so dangerous that uh, and it, it's and we're stuck arguing about surface level things when we're not really identifying the the root cause of it. Um, and so we have to find a way to be able to to steer our culture back to where it's supposed to be uh, a moral one based on biblical principles. Um, it, it, but it's hard. It's hard. How do you do that? How do you take our entire culture and, and steer us back into the right direction? Um, there's a uh, a a French psychologist named Jean Piaget, uh, and he kind of he focused on the child development stages and um, and ultimately how to uh, cultural development. Uh, and basically kind of what he stated was that there was, there's a couple stages, basically that you're born and there's not really much to you. You eat and poop and stuff like that. But then uh, you start playing, uh, then you kind of get a little older, you start playing games with yourself. And he, and he, he frames everything in this game idea. Uh, that culture is like one big game with, with multiple games inside of it. And so as you get older, you start playing games with yourself and then you get older and you play games with uh, someone else, and you start to learn that there's there's rules, spoken and unspoken rules, uh, and then you get way bigger, and you play with a lot more people, um, and those are kind of the games that we interact with each day, like a family would be a game, or the job that you go to has a game. They all have rules that if you break them, there's consequences, um, but if you follow them, then they steer you down the right path. Um, and, and that's kind of the idea of what makes up a culture. And, and so it's... So as we see our culture with all these different games and all these different rules, we kind of are playing by certain rules and we're trying to attack the enemy by rules that they've seemed to set up. You talk about the globalists, the newer order, being able to have their hand in so many different aspects. It's it's like we're trying to beat them at their own game. Well, Piaget, he stated that there was one more level of um, of development, and that's when you can start to create your own rules. And I think I think that's where we need to start moving to as a society, and especially as an alternative media and as Christians, is we need to start taking control of these of these games that we play and start inserting moral rules and get us back to the foundations um, of the biblical principles. A, a great example of this would be um, the political world. We had, uh, before Donald Trump, largely there was this political correctness uh, rule that everyone had to follow. follow. Is if you had to say and, and do certain things and people had to do them or you wouldn't get elected. Um, or if you want to get more conspiratorial about it, you had to be part of the of the globalist movement and the New World Order. Or you wouldn't get elected. Well, Donald Trump comes along and he's like, he sees the he sees the game. He sees the political correctness game of it all. And he's and and the underlying moral issue behind that um, is that people want things to get better and they're going to elect people that seem nice and seem that they, they care about them. And so he identified that. People just want things better. So he comes in with this bold, crass statement, make America great again. And he starts calling all these people and being, you know, crass and kind of rude, but uh, entertaining nonetheless. And so he changed the rule of this political world uh, and, and he started to to fix it and bring it back to a place where truth was the focus and not um, pretending that you care about someone. And so I think that that is a lesson that we need to start taking into other aspects of our world is that we need to start creating rules that have the moral foundation of biblical scriptures so we can so we're not playing on their field anymore. They have to come over here and play in our field. And I think that's the key to taking back our culture. Well, you said a whole lot there, Sam, and I've never heard of you said this is the the Piaget theory? Uh Jean Piaget. 
Gene Pie J. Okay, yeah. yeah. Right. But right before you came on, we were looking at the at this word, saying, you know, what is this word? We've never seen this before. But I do understand exactly what you're talking about. And you know, you mentioned something that we've been uh, talking about off and on here for the last few weeks, which is uh, these people do create their own rules. And it's one thing when you're you're uh, engaged in a battle or, or whatever it is with these people. Not only do they not play play by the own rules, but you have to continue to play by the rules. And we have seen this time and time again, and how this is such an unfair. Uh, it, it seems unfair what we are up against, and we see this with the censorship stuff. It, it's like uh, you know, as soon as you you kick the football, they move the goalpost, and you know it's impossible to to win or get ahead. So, is, yeah. what what is driving you know the, this political divide that we see? It seems like we we can't have discussions, we can't have debates with people. It's uh the the these people who promote uh you know tolerance and and acceptance are intolerant and in any of any and everything that's different from how they believe. What else is driving this political divide in our country? And do you think we will ever get to a point where we words will settle this? Um, just words? I, I don't know. <laughs> um, I, th- I, I think I think words without action is 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 very limited. Uh, it's like faith without actions is dead. Well, words without action is is not only going to get you so far. Uh, but I think, I, and to to root it in the idea or the uh, the cause of censorship. It's really just trying to change what people are consuming and force them to consume certain aspects. Our whole society is based on consumerism, uh, whether you're trying to consume different foods or, or different products you're trying to buy uh, or the music you listen to. We've all heard Ted uh, Brewer go on, on rants about how dangerous television is and, and how you consume message there. Uh, and so that's the point of censorship is to try to stop us from consuming messages that are productive. Uh I mean, you can, and you can even see this in churches. They're just, they, they, there's one person speaking and then everyone else is just consuming a message that goes in one ear and out the other. Uh, and then it's, uh, it's not fruitful at all. Uh, and you know, you got to talk, talk about the schools. Your last guest talked about the schools, which by the way, guys definitely stand up for him. He's on the front lines for sure. Uh, he talks about how the schools are so corrupt. I mean, it's basically 12 years of your life being taught how to think and how to consume a message and you got the common core aspects, you know, controlling even more. Um, so I think that's the root of where our divide comes is because people are just trying to consume certain messages and then, and then that's it. That's where it stops. They just consume it. And then that's the world. Uh, the, um, John Rappaport, I know you guys have on sometimes. Oh yeah. We like him. Yeah. He did. He did a great speech, uh, in 2014 at the secret space, uh, program conference, uh, about creating your own reality and talked about how the things that you consume essentially create the reality that you live in. Um, and if you are just consuming what other people are saying, then there you're letting them create the reality you live in, uh, which is such an important point is, is the opposite of consumerism is to create things. And, and God, God created us and he, we are created in his image. So we are creators as well. And so we're able to create what we want. Uh, and that's, that's a reason that censorship is never going to win. It can't win is because as long as we keep creating things, then then there'll still be new words out there. And, and, and so that's, that's a fight that we have to keep fighting for, for the platforms like on YouTube and uh, on different aspects like that. We have to take them to the, the legal battles. Uh, but as long as we keep creating, whether it, either, whether one person hears it, if everyone keeps creating, then the message is still going to get out. So ultimately it's a futile effort by them to stop us. Uh, the only way we lose that battle is if we stop creating. Um, it's just, it's, it's, it's it's back to the idea of the rules that of the culture that we live in. If we keep creating the rules that we want to live by, and enough righteous people can can create enough rules to to push our culture back to way to the way it's supposed to be, then that's when we'll see things like the gun debate um, go the right way, and things like censorship stop. It's the underlying culture that we really have to start to change, and that's I mean that's what the Constitution is based on. the The preamble says they require the consent of the governed. Well, that means that the consent gets to create the rules, you know? Yeah. Um, so, so that's, that's, so yes, I definitely think that we can stop it. I definitely think we can turn around. Uh, I'm, uh, I have faith that God has put a lot of things in motion to turn it around. Um, but ultimately they're not going to silence us. They can't, what are they going to do? They're going to take away our platforms. All right, well, we'll just talk to the people around us. Well, what are they going to do? Throw us in jail. Well, we'll talk to the, the prison, the prisoners in jail. And then I mean, you can have stories of Bible studies starting up in jails. Well, what are they going to do? Kill us. Well, now I'm in heaven. So congratulations. Now I'm at the grace place ever. So I don't know. That's my, that's my philosophy on it. No, I, I agree. It's, um, 
what scripture says is, is basically going to happen and that what we are up against as believers in this world. Uh, I want to ask you this. Do you, the, when we were, when I was on your show over the weekend, we talked about this, the spiritual divide. Do you think it, well, this social justice, politically correct movement, it seems that you know, the same people who are pushing for a gun ban or the same, you know, to save the children are the same ones who, you know, love abortion and call it a constitutional right. We see these these people who are promoting uh, uh, being the moral authority, trying to be the immoral authority while promoting the most evil, vile, and immoral uh, movements that we have in this country. And I want to ask you, how much of this debate, how much of this divide do you think is based on spiritual deception or the spiritual battle? Uh, I would say every aspect of our society, everything that happens, every event, every idea, every person has a spiritual component to it. Uh, but it's definitely it's definitely spiritual driven. You have, uh, you know, when you look into the way everything's structured, uh, Satan's on the top of the evil side and God's on the top of the good side. So everything that everything comes down from that. Uh, so, yeah, it's definitely spiritual driven. And uh, the idea goes back to to just, I mean, using kids to try to push a message is it's just it's like disgusting. I, I don't know. But you see both sides doing it, honestly, if you can be fair about it. Uh, both sides do it in the light of a tragedy to try to push a political agenda. Definitely the liberals more um, to try to play on that emotion. Uh, whenever whenever anyone claims to be a moral authority on an issue, that's kind of when you should probably just like, uh, all right, I'm not going to listen to you anymore because you're kind of claiming to be God. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it it's no coincidence that when pr prayers got removed from school, that the school shootings started to really start to ramp up. Uh, and I mean, that's that's a to me, that's a very equal causation. Um, we need to be able to step up in the power of prayer and defend these, these yeah. defend the all the different groups involved. Um, but I'm, it's just it's just it's just moronic what they're trying to do with the gun control. It's like they're they're saying that young kids should be able to vote. Uh, but at the same yeah. time, they're saying young kids should not be able to have guns. Yeah. It's like, well, one has lasting effects for all of future and one has an effect currently. So what is more important? It just doesn't, it's just like, it's clear that it doesn't make sense. And I think people are starting to wake up to that. And as you can see with your numbers growing, uh, people are starting to to tune into quality shows to actually get the ideas um, that they need to. And they're just not going to start, they're just not going to accept it anymore. You know, they're not, they're going to start to be like, listen, this is crap and I'm not going to listen to it. Uh, and uh, as we continue to push people to wake up, it's important that we continue to guide them towards scripture and towards the gospel so they can be equally prepared to fight the physical battle as they are to fight the spiritual battle, uh, which is where the real victory will be had is in the spiritual realm as we take down the demons, you know, driving these different forces. Very well said. And that's one thing, you know, <clears throat> the devil's not trying to get you to become a Democrat. The, the devil wants your soul ultimately, and he'll use the political means, the economic means, whatever it means that they're that are available to use to, to make sure that that happens. And this is why we, I mean, we need to be so front and center, um, in the spiritual aspect of this battle, as well as all the other aspects, but the spiritual is most important. Uh, moving on here. We only got a few minutes left creation culture versus consumerism culture. You're right. We need to create new instead of cons continuing to consume the messages given to us. Can you expand on that? Yeah, it was kind of like I touched on a little earlier, uh, in, in that we, you know, peop, someone else is trying to paint your reality uh, and you have to take control of your own reality. You have to take control of what you see. It, it, and it's pretty close. It kind of sounds like postmodernism. And if you're not careful, it's e very easily to get to that postmodern idea. Um, but it's really it's really actually being active and just like identifying. All right. What's one thing you don't like in your life? I mean, everyone can think of at least one thing they don't like in their life. And then identifying what that is and how can I change it? How can I make that good? How can I make that glorify God? And if we start there in each and every one of our lives, that has a huge effect. Imagine if if everyone listening, you know, I don't really know how many, 2,000 people changed one aspect of their life to glorify God more. I mean, that's that's 2,000 things now that are glorifying God that were not previously. And that's what it means to take control of your reality. It's 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 not letting someone else give you a message and give you what you believe. It's 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 identifying what truth is and finding the morals to back up that truth and then actually putting them into action and being different uh, and being that light unto the world that we're called to be. And that's 
to me, that's how we change. That's and then we start to be unified through that uh, as everyone starts to you know find other people who are creating new things. Um, like for example, like like you guys on the Hagman and Hagman Report. It's just you stepped up and you created this show, and that is such an important aspect to so many people. And if you wouldn't have stepped up and created that. Then all everyone else, everyone listening right now would be doing something else that's maybe not as strongly glorifying God. And so that is so such a huge idea to wrap your head around. But it's so important for people to step up and, and follow what God's calling them to to do to create different ministries. And and even if it's just affecting your family or affecting the people right around you, that's a big deal. If everyone does that, that that's how we change our culture. That's how we start to unite people. And that's how we that's how we stop are you know, a tyrannical government from taking over or uh, a culture, you know, going towards um, a new world order or where Satan's trying to drive it. That's how we drive it back to God. Uh, and obviously giving God glory through all that because because the power that he's given us to wield uh, is dominion over the evil that's trying to drive us a certain way. And, and that's, that states a lot that we're still heading towards the evil, uh, even though God gave us authority over it. It's like, come yeah. on, people, wake up. <laughs> it's like, we have the power. Let's go get my inner coach Dave going. Like, what are you doing out there? Yeah, no, it's, um, it's so frustrating. One of the things that, uh, is, is the most frustrating to me is when you see the churches, uh, starting to, to fall and to move away from the word of God and the foundations that they were founded on. And you expect it from the world. You expect it from society. You don't expect it from the institutions that were tasked and, and have been strong for so long in, in remaining, uh, righteous, but now we see everything going wildly off course. Sam, we got about two and a half minutes left. I want to make sure I give you time to cover anything that we didn't get a chance to cover. Also, uh, any of the the sharpening reports that you've done that you uh, want people to go back and take a look at, and some of your favorite guests and and whatnot. Yeah, uh, well, I think the last thing is is just be different. Uh, you're you're being fed a uh, a message that wants to conform you to be the same wants everyone to be the same. There's the, the story of the Tower of Babel uh, where it talks about they used bricks and mortar to build the Tower of Babel, which is a symbol for everyone becoming the same square block and not being different. And when you go throughout scripture, it talks about the different stones that God used to build uh, to build his altars. And that's just to be different and unique. And every person has a purpose. So anyone listening now, you have a purpose that God wants you to do and you have to embrace those different, uh, the, the differences in you to be able to fully uh, do the work of God. Uh, but yeah, as for the sharpening report, you know, I, I would love everyone to to listen. Uh, I do a lot less talking. I let the guests talk more, um, just because they're the the wise ones on the show. So uh, I, I had Mark Taylor on. Me and him are really good friends. He's uh, fantastic. I had Zev Peratt on. He was he was really interesting talking about how he lost forty million dollars following the Lord. Uh, just absolutely incredible testimonies. Um, so and uh, I just had Doc Marquis on not too long uh, the last last Friday. And then of course, uh, Doug's going to be up this Friday. So definitely tune into that as well. Awesome. Looking forward to that. And it, it is interesting when you get to do these shows, the different number of people you get to talk to and the different insights, um, and, and opinions and topics that you go through. And we wish you all the best, Sam. And again, we got to meet Sam in, in Chicago and, uh, just did his show that will air Friday. Where can people go to find the show, Sam? Uh, yeah, we're on YouTube for now, as long as they don't try to censor us. Um, but we're also on Blog Talk. Uh, those are the two main main places. iTunes podcast, if you have that as well. Um, but I'm trying to identify different avenues to go down. Things like Steam It and DTube, I'm, I'm trying to get onto that as well. I haven't made too much progress, but trying to uh, diversify as the hammer comes down. So I'll keep creating no matter what. I'm not going to stop. Uh, no one's going to stop me from speaking. Very well said. Sam Johnson. The sharpening report.com also on Twitter. You saw there it is at Sam Johnston. And you can follow him social media, Twitter, YouTube, etc. Incredibly sharpening reports the show. Yeah, absolutely. I, I just young, enjoyed listening to you guys. Young, which is uh which is always good. We need more young people doing things like this and things like uh, what Sam's doing. Sam, thank you so much for joining us. It was a, a great segment, and we will talk with you here in the near future. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it.